You want proof? New York Times? You want proof? Twitter? You want proof? Facebook? You want proof? You corrupt, lying, whatever you are? Here's the proof. Mr. Dorsey, who the hell elected you and put you in charge of what the media are allowed to report and what the American people are allowed to hear? Fortunately, we've been able to build partnerships across the industry, uh, both with the companies here today and with law enforcement and the intelligence community. So I want to ask you about the cover up here because the FBI had this information for a year. Uh, even as the president was getting impeached in January of this year, the FBI had these uh, emails and the laptop from Hunter Biden. They sat on it. The media won't show it. Will Christopher Wray be fired after the election? Hey, everybody, it's Everett with Ohio for Freedom. You know, it's one thing when big tech and big media get involved in heavy duty censorship, but it's another thing altogether when the FBI and the intelligence community gets involved, and that's what we're going to talk about. Let's get started. I hear the sweet sound of freedom, and I won't be long. I didn't write it. Russians didn't write it, and I didn't get the 30 million. Your prince got it. The prince of darkness, Joe Biden. So the Hunter Biden laptop story has been out for a couple of weeks and it has caused tech censorship and media censorship to happen at a historical level, an unprecedented level. I'm not going to get into a whole lot of details about Hunter Biden and his business deals across around the world and selling out our country uh, and selling his father's influence. Uh, but I am going to talk about the FBI and I'm going to talk about the intelligence community and their role in all of this. But I want to start by just showing you one of any one of numerous articles that you can pull that demonstrate that the FBI has been in possession of this laptop because it's part of a criminal case. There's a case number that's been filed. And in a little bit, I want to get to a clip of Hunter Biden, and he's going to say some very damning things regarding his father, Sleepy Joe, a clip that you probably haven't heard, but one that you should have heard months ago, were it not for the involvement of the FBI and the, uh, the uh, intelligence community. So I'm going to play, uh, show you an article just to demonstrate that the FBI does have a case, and then we're going to talk about it. Plenty of stories to confirm this, but let's just use this article from the Washington Sentinel. Here's the headline, confirmed FBI investigating Hunter Biden for money laundering. It's dated October 30th, and I just want to scroll down. Lots of information in this article, but here it is. There's the FBI case number. This is a real case. They are really investigating money laundering with Hunter Biden. And they've been in possession of the laptop since the later part of 2019. So there is a criminal investigation. We showed you the case file. You read the articles. You find out the FBI has been in possession of this material since the end of last year. We also know that that laptop has information about Ukraine. We also know that earlier this year, the whole nation had to go through the pain and the misery of this stupid hoax Ukraine impeachment debacle that took place. And the FBI never said anything, never made any of this information available if they had maybe the impeachment wouldn't have even taken place at all. So that's one issue. You know, the Democrats like to, in retrospect, as a campaign issue, like to say that the president was slow in his response to the coronavirus. Well, he wasn't. But you know what? It might have been kind of a distraction to be dealing with an impeachment during the middle of a pandemic. Thankfully, the president wasn't slow, wasn't distracted, but the issue of not making information available about Ukraine really is a black eye for the FBI, who in my opinion has lost all credibility. But to make matters much worse, Mark Zuckerberg let it slip in testimony before the United States Senate this week 
that the FBI had gone to them earlier and kind of uh, preemptively set them up to be their pawns for censorship. I'm going to replay the clip we played earlier, plus a little bit more, then we'll talk about it. Uh, fortunately, we've been able to build partnerships across the industry, uh, both with the companies here today and with law enforcement and the intelligence community. Partnerships across the industry, including the companies that are represented here, Google, Twitter, Facebook, between them and law enforcement and the intelligence community. Ladies and gentlemen, since when is the First Amendment our right to free speech? Since when does that fall under the domain of law enforcement and the intelligence community? Um, you know, one of the threats that the FBI uh, has alerted our companies and the public to was the possibility of a hack and leak operation in the days or weeks leading up to this election. So he lets something slip here, but he also gives out some disinformation. I want to break that down. Now, he talks about a hack and leak operation. But before that, he says one of the threats that the FBI has alerted our companies to and the public. All right. So there's the reference to the preemptive uh, coaching, priming, whatever. Uh, to be able to use the tech companies for this censorship operation. But he says, our companies and the public. Ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you a question. Are you part of the public? Am I part of the public? When did the FBI ever come to you or come to me or make a public announcement about some kind of a threat? It didn't happen. That's disinformation. Uh, so you had both the public testimony from, from the FBI um, and in, in private meetings, um, alerts that, that were given to uh, at least our company, I assume the others as well. So Zuckerberg says the FBI briefed Facebook and other companies as well to the threat of a hack and leak operation. Well, it looks like they did brief other companies as well, and one of them was Twitter. Two weeks ago, Twitter made the unilateral decision to censor the New York Post in a series of two blockbuster articles, both alleging evidence of corruption against Joe Biden, the first concerning Ukraine, the second concerning communist China. And Twitter made the decision, number one, to prevent users, any user, from sharing those stories. And number two, you went even further and blocked the New York Post from sharing on Twitter its own reporting. Why did Twitter make the decision to censor the New York Post? Uh, we had a hack materials policy. So that was Ted Cruz asking Rip Van Dorsey of Twitter why they banned the New York Post story that broke the whole Hunter Biden laptop uh, issue in the first place. And his answer was because of a hack materials policy. Well, there's never been any evidence that those materials were hacked and they had to retract that because they were wrong. But who prepped them in the first place? Who preempted uh, them in the first place to be able to use that as a censorship excuse, the idea of hacked materials? The FBI. And I just want to say that... <clears throat> I am incensed about every kind of censorship. Uh, I, I, I've experienced it myself multiple times, but man, am I incensed over what has happened in the last couple of weeks with Twitter and Facebook. But folks, this is something different. This is our government getting involved in helping the big tech monopolies censor and filter what you and I can say and what you and I can hear. I'm going to show you an article <clears throat> referencing Glenn Greenwald of The Intercept who resigned his position this week because his story was, he wasn't allowed to run a story. It was, it was censored. And if you pay attention to the bit that I'm going to share from the article, he also mentions the intelligence community. New York Post. October 29th, here's the headline, Glenn Greenwald quits The Intercept over censorship of Hunter Biden article. 
going to read just one paragraph. The brute censorship this week of my article about the Hunter Biden materials and Joe Biden's conduct regarding Ukraine and China, as well as my critique of the media's rank closing attempt in a deeply unholy union with Silicon Valley and the intelligence community to suppress its revelations eroded the last justification I could cling to for staying. I want to reread that little segment and the intelligence community. I really want to read that story by Mr. Greenwald. I really want to hear his take on the unholy alliance between the intelligence community and Silicon Valley. Because, folks, that's where the real story is. I went into this probably like you did. If you've been paying attention to this Hunter Biden laptop story, if you knew about this Senate committee hearing where they would have Google, Twitter, and Facebook appear, you probably thought, that's what it was all about. But now we come to find out that that's only half the story. The real story is how Facebook, Twitter, Google have been aided and abetted by the FBI and the intelligence community. Senator Cruz began his questioning of Rip Van Dorsey asking him if he felt that Twitter had the ability to influence an election. And of course, Rip Van Dorsey danced around the edges and didn't really give an answer. But obviously the answer is yes, because when you suppress a major story that has damning information about a presidential campaign, when you completely put a lid on it, of course it influences an election. But the real rest of the story, the rest of the story, like Paul Harvey used to say, is the role that the FBI and the, the uh, intelligence community have played. Now, we're going to move along. I'm going to play you this clip by Hunter Biden, and he is going to say some very damning information regarding his father, Sleepy Joe. And once again, you probably haven't heard this, but you should have heard this a long time ago. The reason you haven't is because of the FBI. He's going to mention a business partner named Patrick Ho. And just in case you're not familiar with Patrick Ho, I'm going to let you get a little bit of an introduction as to who Patrick Ho is from Rudy Giuliani, and we're going to sail right into Hunter Biden, and then we'll put a wrap on it. And then it turns out that his number two guy, Patrick Ho, Patrick Ho gets arrested in the United States, and he's denied bail in a bribery case, and the first person he calls is James Biden. I get calls from my father to tell me that the New York Times is calling, but my old partner, Eric, who literally has done me harm for I don't know how long, is the one taking the calls because my father will not stop sending the calls to Eric. I have another New York Times reporter calling about my representation of the, literally, Dr. Patrick Ho, the f***ing spy chief of China who started the company that my partner, who was worth $323 billion, found it, and is now missing. The richest man in the world is missing, who was my partner. He was missing since I last saw him in his $58 million apartment and signed a $4 billion deal to be, build the largest LNG port in the world. And. I am receiving calls from the Southern District of New York, from the U.S. Attorney himself. My best friend in business, Devin, has named me as a witness without telling me. In a criminal case, and my father, without telling me. Okay, you've got street smarts and you've got good people skills, so decide for yourself. Is Hunter Biden telling the truth? We don't know for sure who he's talking to in this pre in this recorded conversation that came from his laptop. Purportedly, it's a stripper mistress or somebody. But in either case, he's singing the blues. Okay, so is he making this stuff up so somebody feels sorry for him, or is he telling the truth? Is he telling the truth when he says that he can't find his business partner Patrick Ho, the effing spy chief of uh, of China? Is he telling the truth? Is he telling the truth when he says that Devin Archer? 
Fisher, his other business partner, has named him as a witness in a criminal case. Is he telling the truth? Is he telling the truth when he says that his father, Joe Biden, who's running, if he can remember, for president of the United States, is he telling the truth when he says that Joe Biden was named as a witness in a criminal case? Because if that is true, there is no way that Joe Biden can look at the American public and say, I don't know anything about my son's business dealings. So judge that for yourself, but also realize this, this conversation, you should have been able to have heard about that months ago, uh, months ago, but the FBI suppressed it. So I want to kind of do as I wrap up a little verbal uh, timeline for you. Okay, so here is the original New York Post story that ran on October 14th, ran on October 14th. Now, prior to that, the FBI uh, began this partnership according to Mark Zuckerberg. This partnership that included, and I went back and checked, he uses the word private meetings, private meetings plural. So one of the things that's really frustrating about these Senate hearings is that mostly the senators, you know, make some grandiose statements and nothing really, really happens. There's no follow-up. There's no drill down, examination, cross-examination. I wish there was because what would have made a lot of sense when Zuckerberg spoke, testified, whatever you want to call it, how about these for just a couple of questions? Mr. Zuckerberg, you mentioned these meetings. Who was your FBI contact in these meetings? Who is your, I mean, the FBI is getting involved in helping the media decide what and what to, to, not, you know, to print or to, uh, to run on social media. Who is your contact? Who is your contact in the FBI? Who do they report to? What branch of the FBI are they with? You said you had meetings, plural. When did you have these meetings? What are the dates? How many of these meetings have you had? Where did these meetings occur? Maybe they were virtual. Maybe they were not. We don't know. And then, very obviously, the, whole, the Senate committee hearing was predicated upon the story that was ran by the New York Post. So a very obvious question that never got asked was, did your contact at the FBI call you after that New York Post story ran? Did you call them? So let's just put a little timeline together, okay? Story runs on the 14th. Prior to that, the FBI is priming the pump. The intelligence community is priming the pump, is preconditioning the folks at Twitter, the folks at Facebook. That story runs, runs within 24 hours Twitter shuts it down. Facebook shuts it down. The press secretary for the president of the United States, Kaylee McEnany, her Twitter account is blocked, is suspended. Team Trump's Twitter account is blocked, is suspended. Within 24 hours, you have all these news outlets saying the story is debunked. Why? Because Twitter and Facebook banned it. Like, that's that's a reason. And you also, a few days later, then hear uh, the announcement that there's going to be this Senate committee hearing, which only happens like seven days before the election. And here it is the weekend before the election. And the general public does not even really realize, does not even really realize the role that the FBI and the intelligence community has played in suppressing this. So it, there, there you have it. Now, <clears throat> I have some good news for you. By the way, Tonda and I voted on Monday. We voted Trump. And one of the, one of the uh, people working there told me he was a Republican guy. He said, for every one packet the Democrat across the sidewalk hands out, we hand out 10. I'm going to tell you, the remnant is praying the Patriots are working. Donald Trump's going to be reelected. And when that happens, it is not time to let up. It is not time to breathe a sigh of relief because there's a lot of things that need to happen and they need to happen quick. Number one, Christopher Ray at the FBI needs to be fired. I've got clips. We're, we're, we don't have time for that, but he needs to be fired. Gina Haskell needs to be fired, but anybody connected to this garbage needs to be fired. Comey, uh, Clapper, Brennan, 
need to be prosecuted and the prosecutions need to go deep and wide because this cancer, this demonic cabal needs to be exercised from our government. So if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you're there on YouTube. If you hate this video, please like, share, and subscribe and hit the notification bell on YouTube. Uh, until next time, God bless you. God bless your family. And God bless the state of Ohio. Get out and vote. And God bless the United States of America. I hear the sweet sound of